What's going on, Tigers? This is Jacob Shoup. Uh, today we have a nice up market. Um, the DIA going straight up from the morning, NDX, similar kind of pattern. The Q's, similar as well. And uh, GDX has been cooking recently. And that is at the expense of the DXY, so the dollar essentially. As someone mentioned in the den, it had been, you know, I mean, from this morning, I mean, we really had a steep decline going on here. Um, it went down uh, past the 101 mark, was kind of flirting with 100, just 100 in general. Um, really tried um, for the past few hours to get back up over that 101 mark, and it did. And we'll see if that holds in for the rest of the day. But the, the dollar has, getting, has been getting absolutely smoked. Um, that's obviously great for gold. Um, so we'll see what that kind of has in store. Um, you can look at Steel Dynamics. Um, so it did end up, let me see here. Do year to date, it did end up testing that level, like we were saying the other week, um, and then it did reject it. But it's not on a lot of volume. It might get back down to that area, and and we'll see what happens. You know, as I always say, I, I loved trading this stock quite a bit, um, and so we'll see. Steel's also at, like, I guess, like a cyclical high for the industry uh, right now. So it may be, um, I don't know if I would ever suggest right now is a good time to get into steel in general, just because of the cyclical nature of the industry. Um, but it is making that that nice, um, you know, it tested, rejected, it'll probably retest again. So um, it's interesting is Volvo has knocked it out of the park today. Um, truck maker Volvo post record Q1 as sales and margins beat forecasts. Post 45% jump in preliminary Q1 earnings. Um, their EBIT is at 18.4 uh, billion crowns versus, uh, I mean, that knocked their forecast out of the park. Um, full earnings will be on April 20th, and uh, it's a nice little bump in it. They've been really focusing a lot on making, I mean, they have forever, um, but cars, uh, excuse me, trucks, um, cargo and all that. Um, and they've done quite well. Um, they're also doing decently regarding like the EV market as well. Um, so it'll be interesting to follow along and kind of see, uh, see what happens with them. Um, in some news, I know Twitter is no longer publicly traded, but there has been some interesting stuff going on. Um, Twitter announced earlier that they're going to merge with eToro, not merge with eToro, but, uh, rather have an eToro plugin, um, for their application. So let me see here. Pull this over for y'all. This is neat. I mean, this headline says it pushes app into finance, but really what it is, I think it, it, Musk wants this to be a one and done place where you stop, right? And this is also the concept in general with like Web3, okay? And if you're not familiar with like what Web3 is, um, the way that it would pra you know, practically be uh, implemented is it's, it's a one place to go. So Reddit kind of tried to run with that as like the front page of the internet a while ago. Um, but obviously there's, you know, it's just really a message board at the end of the day, a forum board. Twitter with Musk implementing this is it's huge. So, I mean, you'll, you'll be able to trade stocks based on it. Um, you'll be able to trade crypto on it. Uh, Twitter has a really cool kind of feature, uh, essentially, where if you put a money sign in front of a ticker, it'll link it. It's like a hashtag, but for stocks. Um, so, and this is interesting, too, is it's coming in at a time where, um, how do you call it? Uh, of course, I'm blanking on the name of it. Give me a second. The uh, <laughs> where it's basically like a medium where you where you post articles um, in behind paywalls. Uh, but anyways, they came out yesterday saying that they were going to compete with Twitter and allowing you know kind of short form um, and then message scroll down board. So. Twitter has also announced that they're going to be um, implementing something called monetization, where you can put your posts um, essentially behind a paywall, which will be massive. Um, again, not publicly traded, but um, what I think is interesting about this is, you know, I, I haven't been on Twitter in a long time, but I've recently been on uh, TFNN's Twitter, um, and I've noticed that you have long form posts now on it. And this is getting away from the, the core of what Twitter was. and kind of how it carved its market share to begin with. And I think what that does is it leaves opportunities for smaller 
uh, platforms that have been trying to compete with Twitter to get a leg in. So in the next in the next few years, it might be interesting uh, to see things like Mastodon um, and, and some other message boards that have tried to, or excuse me, social media apps that have tried to um, emulate original Twitter. I'll see how uh, they kind of get a percentage of the market share out of it. Um, but it is it is pretty interesting to see uh, this kind of development for it. Um, and I think really like this is the future for a lot of these major tech platforms. All your social media platforms um, are going to need to start integrating. I mean, this kind of competition here, um, they're going to need to start integrating more and more features. Facebook did it with Marketplace, which is pretty huge in a way of like cutting down eBay a little bit in some capacity, um, not in every way. Um, but, you know, this kind of diversif diversification of, of what the platform does and what you're allowed to do uh, is, is pretty uh, interesting. So let's see, obviously CPI was lower yesterday, which is huge. But I'm, you know, one of the things that was interesting to me is when you read the CPI, and we'll get more into this when we come back, um, but you had fuel, oil, and gasoline um, extremely low. I mean, you had massive negative growth for them, right? And this was, you know, weighting CPI quite a bit. Not much else was budging. And what I'm concerned about in some ways, and I obviously could be entirely wrong on this, um, but with, with the new OPEC cuts, and we might not see it until after May, um, but we, you know, might end up getting higher gas. I mean, we've deployed gas prices. We've deployed a lot of the strategic reserves already, especially in March, which obviously none of this OPEC revelation came to light until uh, April. And uh, through March, um, there was a deployment of the Strategic Petroleum Reserve. Let's see if I can pull it up for you. Right about here. And this was in March. And so whether or not that su you know, suppressed prices greatly at the pump, uh, you know, we'll stand to see. Um, with the increase in OPEC, and again, we'll, we'll talk about this a little bit more when we come back, um, we're, we might not see too much increase until after May, as what the Saudis do essentially is form contracts a few months out for delivery of supply. Um, we'll talk about that a little more. Folks, stay tuned. We'll be right back. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how the